Hello, I'm XP Lovecat and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing one of HP Lovecraft's most well-known novellas, which is The Shadow Over Innsmouth. The Shadow Over Innsmouth was written in 1931 by HP Lovecraft, and it's one of his longer short stories and also one of his most well-known. So this was actually the only story during his lifetime that was published in book form. So that right there kind of tells you that it was pretty popular back then, and right now it's pretty popular too. If you've just barely heard of Lovecraft, you may have even heard of this story or the lore that's in it. There are tons of adaptations related to this story from video games, board games, comic books, other stories. A lot of the works that are out there have had some sort of inspiration from this beginning novella, The Shadow Over Innsmouth. So this story revolves around a narrator who is traveling on a tour of New England. It's kind of a coming of age tour. He wants to learn about architecture, a little bit about his genealogy, and is making his way towards Arkham. He makes a pit stop in Innsmouth and some disturbing events take place. So from this point forward, there will definitely be spoilers. So please, if you want to read the book first, go ahead and go do that and come back to my channel. Otherwise, there will be spoilers moving forward. This student is on his way to tour New England and he's trying to be a little bit frugal and save some money. So he chooses some less expensive options for transportation. Someone recommends to him to use the bus that goes through Innsmouth. Now, not a lot of people use the bus, but it's cheap and it's on his way. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna go well. He decides to use the bus, learns a little bit about Innsmouth before he goes, and really, it sounds like not a lot of people are welcome there. But he's like, it'll be fine. I'm gonna take the bus, it's fine. And doing a little bit of research prior to taking the bus, he talks to someone that describes the Innsmouth people in a particular way. There certainly is a strange kind of streak in the Innsmouth folks today. I don't know how to explain it, but it sort of makes you crawl. You'll notice a little in Sargent if you take his bus. Some of them have queer, narrow heads with flat noses and bulgy, sari eyes that never seem to shut. And their skin ain't quite right. Rough and scabby, and the sides of their necks are all shriveled or creased up. Get bald, too. Very young. The older fellows look the worst. In fact, I don't believe I've ever seen a very old chap of that kind. Now, if you're not too familiar with Lovecraft's work, you might just consider this maybe a small town. Maybe they just have an incest problem. That, that exists in parts of the world. We'll learn here pretty soon it's not incest. It's something much, much worse. He gets on the bus and already there are some weird vibes if you will some of the people on the bus aren't exactly normal so here we get a little bit of sprinkling of horror and what's about to come he gets on the bus arrives in Innsmouth and Lovecraft does an amazing job of describing this once bigger town and the decrepit state it is in. Eastward, I could catch blue glimpses of the harbor against which rose the decaying remains of three once beautiful Georgian steeples. And toward the shore on the opposite bank of the river, I saw the white belfry surmounting what I took to be the Marsh refinery. We will learn pretty quickly that the Marsh family is essential to the plot in this story and plays a very important role in the narrator's life. As the narrator keeps traveling through the town, he stumbles on a church and is able to peek through one of the doors. He sees someone dressed in robes and has a very strange tiara on top of his head, a very beautiful piece of jewelry and strange looking as well. He learns that this is called the Esoteric Order of Dagon. Now, if you've read the short story Dagon by Lovecraft, you probably have a little bit of hint of what's going on in this town but otherwise you probably just think it's a weird church name. Now about a third of the way through this story, I had to pause and I'm going to pause in this video as well and give you a little bit of a Lovecraft language lesson. Lovecraft's writing can be a little bit tough to digest and sometimes he uses really old words or words that we just don't have in our vocabulary today. 
Now, one of the words that keeps showing up during this story is the word show, but not the way we spell it, S-H-E-W. Now, could this just be my ignorance as a result of the American public education system? Yeah, probably. But in case any of my viewers are also a product of the American education system, the word show, written like this, just means show. It's an older version of the word. You probably could have made an educated guess about that. However, it shows up all the time in this story and it was starting to distract me so I looked it up and moved on. And now when you read the story, it'll stick out to you and you'll never be able to read it the same again. You're welcome. Okay, now back to the book. The narrator is quite curious about this town and wants to learn a little bit more. He discovers that there is an old man named Zadok Allen who from time to time have been known to speak to outsiders about the situation in Innsmouth but he has to do it in a more secluded place, so he procures some alcohol and travels to a location he deemed safe to speak to him. When finding a place to speak to him, there's a great description I'd like to share. I guided my companion down the lane and picked out spots to sit in among the mossy stones. The air of death and desertion was ghoulish, and the smell of fish almost insufferable, but I was resolved to let nothing deter me. I can truly envision myself in this environment and almost taste that awful smell that's described. After some bribing, the narrator is able to start this old man on his story, which turns out to be quite rambly, but has a lot of interesting information. I love how this old man character is portrayed. I want to read just a little bit of his ramblings to give you an example of what I mean. Hey you, why don't you say something? How'd you like to be living in a town like this, with everything a rotten and a dying and boarded up monsters crawling and bleating and barking and hopping around black cellars and attics every way you turn? Although the old man is certainly rambling, it's almost poetic in the way that he does it, which is something I really admire about Lovecraft's writing. Eventually he learns the story of Obed Marsh. Now this is a great fishing town and their supply was running quite dry. He eventually forms a cult that's able to produce fish and unique jewelry with just the cost of some human sacrifices. No big deal. So after this cult is established, you also find out that whatever creatures are giving them help from the sea are breeding with the humans and making these weird hybrid creatures. And they might look human to begin with, but as they age, they start to transform into something else and live their life out in the sea. So already a pretty creepy situation going. Their narrator isn't completely bought, but he does have a general sense of what's going on in the town. Later that evening, he goes to catch the bus as he's heading out of town. But as he does that, he learns that the bus is having engine issues. Yay! At this point, if I was him, I would just start walking towards Arkham but he's a little braver than I am and decides to stay the night in Innsmouth. During the evening, he gets a weird feeling and sensation and isn't able to quite sleep. Um, he stays fully dressed and is just lying in bed when he hears a shuffling in the hallway and someone starts messing with his door. That's weird. That doesn't stop. And then all of a sudden it turns into pounding on his door. Something is after him, and he has the urge to get out of that hotel room. This part in the story is very intense and very dramatic. You follow him through his journey as he tries to escape this hotel room, and eventually he gets out and into the streets. But it doesn't get much better because he's aware that a manhunt is on for him. He tries to run away, and in order to not get spotted, he has to kind of pretend to be these weird Innsmouth creatures and they have a very particular walk that he tries to impersonate as he goes through the town. He eventually gets to a good hiding spot and he's like, I hear something coming, I don't want to see what it is, it's going to make me crazy so I'll just close my eyes. But that doesn't quite work. He is too tempted and opens his eyes and he sees a procession of deep ones going down the road these weird fish human creatures going down the street and the evening ends in what is described as a merciful fit of fainting. He awakes unharmed and makes his way back to town. Now at this point he doesn't finish the rest of his tour because what just happened? He wants to get home and somewhere safe. 
Throughout the next few years, he is still haunted by these horrors that he saw that evening, and he decides to learn a little bit more about his family history. Upon more investigation, he actually finds out that he's a descendant of Obed Marsh. You know, the guy that started all this craziness. And after that point, throughout the years, he slowly sees himself transform into what is going to be a deep one. But he vows he will not commit suicide like his uncle did, and he will not end up in an insane asylum like his cousin. The story ends with him breaking his cousin out of that asylum, and both of them heading towards the sea to live with the Deep Ones forever on. Now time for my review. So I loved The Shadow Over Innsmouth. It was intense, dramatic, very descriptive, and the lore was so good. Lovecraft's writing style was really highlighted in this story. You got to see a longer version of something he could write, as well as the lore being extremely fascinating and obviously something that we all kind of latched onto as there's such a range of adaptations coming from this story. I did feel at times that it was a little bit slow, um, Especially in the beginning, it could have ramped up a little bit faster, but other than that, I thought the, the story was great. I especially loved the scene in the hotel room. It was terrifying, and I was there with him the whole time. I could visualize what was going on. It was very anxiety-inducing to read, which is fun when you enjoy horror. So overall, I really recommend this story for anyone who's starting out in Lovecraft or anyone that really has an interest in his works. I'm going to be giving this story a four cats and one kitten out of five cats. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And join me next time when I do more Lovecraft story reviews. Thanks. Bye.